For 10 years, the top echelon of women's tennis has featured a Belgian presence. Without question, the most successful have been Justine Henin and Kim Kloisters, but the country's real trailblazer first came to our attention 17 years ago. I started uh, my career in 1991 as a professional. Um, I was 18 years old and number 245 in the world. And I ended it my career uh, nine years later and I was 18 in the world. In 2000, I had my main goal. It's uh, going to the Olympic Games. Belgium got for the first time in, uh, in the history uh, a bronze medal in tennis. She was in the top 10. She uh, helped uh, uh, Belgian tennis to come in another level and uh, I think that helped uh, really Kim and me to uh, achieve what we did in, in our career. I've always admired um, the way that she uh, you always gave herself out on the court and, and also off the court. Sometimes you have to be a bit wacko, I think, to play some tennis because hitting this ball all the time is, is it's weird. When I was 16 years old, it was very clear in my mind I wanted to become a professional tennis player. I knew that if after two years I was not able to reach the top 100 uh, ranking uh, in the world, that I would quit with tennis. Before you turn pro, let's say, my, my parents and the federation, they spend probably 200,000 uh, euro and I didn't even start to earn money. That's just the way it is. You always have to be careful what you say, what you do. If you gain weight, the people they will always look at you and they know if you are fit, they know if you look good. The people watch you a lot, they analyze and the, the women most of the time, they love to do that. It's a lot of jealousy because if you are at the top, you got a lot of advantage. By example, you are ranked uh, one of the seed uh, in a Grand Slam. You get the possibility to be alone on the court, to practice, uh, you get new balls every time. Your call is closer to the, to the main building. You get a car, the other one they have to take the bus. These are things that when you never have them, you don't care. But once you had them, you want to keep them. The difference between a top 10 players and a top 50 players is definitely the mental part. One thing that is very tiring for the player is definitely to travel on the tour because you have to play at least 30 tournaments in a year. It's 30 weeks that you are gone and it's very tiring for the player. have friendships you have more it's more like you're working in a company you have colleagues you spend 10 years of your life having contact with a lot of people but you don't know them because if you know them too close then they become friends and if they become friends then you start to have emotion for these people you have to imagine that you hate that person the hardest button to button. It was in 1999. I was calling home and she was not answering the phone. So it surprised me because it, most of the time she was there. She was always answering the phone and that day she didn't answer the phone. It was my father. What surprised me because he said she's, she's upstairs so she was at home but she didn't come. So I knew that there was something bad but I didn't know how bad it was. So uh, when I got home then I went to visit her and she was very sick but she didn't say that she had cancer. So just a couple of days later when they realized that it was getting very bad then uh, they had to tell me what, uh, what she had. But she had it already for two years nearly. I arrived in Miami and I played my first match and then I decided after my first match that I would go home because, I don't know, I had this feeling that it was time to go and then I, I went home uh, the Sunday and the Monday she died. But I saw her so she was, uh, she was happy for that.
it was my birthday, so I had to play on center court against Lindsay Davenport, second seed it's in the tournament. With all this situation that I thought, okay, I have nothing to lose and uh, no matter what's going to happen, I mean, that's my last French Open. It was just eerie, the feeling of the crowd were chanting, Dominique, Dominique, Dominique. The whole of Belgium was, uh, was kind of going crazy. That was kind of the, the big match for everybody to see. And um, I think I was 17, um, such a young girl, and only, I think, maybe playing my third or second French Open at that time. It was uh, just a, a nice feeling. You, you could just kind of just feel that vibe already in the beginning of, of a tournament. I won against my emotion because I couldn't handle that the couple of weeks before and because of that match I knew that I was able again to play some tennis without having any trouble with uh, my emotions. That win single-handedly I think revived the last part of her career but in terms of an overall human interest story this is one of the few times uh, in any sport where the result is irrelevant, where the human story is what matters to everyone. Dominique, merci de nous répondre. The decision to retire uh, was because I was mentally very tired and uh, I was not enjoying playing anymore. It's just so much expectation for not only yourself but from the press and from your entourage that puts a lot of pressure to myself and it was very hard at the end. What I miss most of about tennis was uh, the massage. <laughs> I love to have massage. <laughs> It's hard for the tennis player most of the time to find a new challenge because uh, everything was around sports, about tennis, and uh, you don't know what you are good in, uh, what you like to do, because the only thing you've done is, is hitting this ball for millions of times. I got pregnant at the end of my career, so my focus was on my, my kids. Because of the tennis, I wanted to be a perfect mom, but perfect mom doesn't exist. Now, after more than five years, um, I have a wonderful daughter. <laughs> She's gonna be six uh, at the end of May. So it's a good age to start playing tennis because uh, she knows what is uh, right, what is left, uh, what she has to do with the racket and the ball. <laughs> I'm not going to push her, but if she says uh, she wants to play and she wants to have uh, practice as well, um, with a lot of pressure. If she can do tennis, why not? We now wish Dominique well in her next chapter, combining media work with mental training and the launch of today's book, A Matter of Character.